Hello everyone, in this how to make my first Unity game tutorial, we are going to take a look at the Unity interface, how to get Unity up and running as well as some simple game objects. Before we get into it, remember to subscribe to see more and hit the notification bell to be notified whenever I upload. It really helps me out. Now on with the show. So what is this series all about? This series is all about taking you, the person who is new to Unity and building your very first game. You'll be learning tons of different things throughout this series, including coding, including design, and many more things about the Unity engine itself. So where do we go from here? Who is this aimed at? Well, this is aimed at many different types of people, but primarily it's aimed at people who are fairly new to Unity or perhaps brand new to Unity. By the end of this series, you will be able to consider yourself an intermediate developer within Unity. So realistically, this series is designed with you, the viewer, in mind. And the great thing is, you don't actually need any prior knowledge in Unity or programming to get started with this series. I will teach it all to you. So, the series will work in all versions of Unity as long as you have something from at least 2015. Some menus may look a little different, but if you're using a different version to me, things may be moved around a little. If you get stuck or anything, please leave a comment in the video that you're stuck on and I will be able to get back to you. If not me, somebody from my fantastic community will be able to. So what are we going to create? Well, we're going to create a cool little game that you've probably seen in the thumbnail of this video. By the end, it will look something similar to this. So let's get into all of this. Right in front of us here, we have the Unity Hub, and this is more than likely what you will see first and foremost from Unity. You'll download this, but you may not see all of these installs. How do you get Unity onto your machine? Make sure you click installs down here in the hub, then you can click on add, and it will present you with a couple of options of what you can install. I would recommend one of the latest official releases, possibly one of the most recent ones. You don't want to go too far back. 2018 is a good version, but you may want to use 2020 if you're in 2020. Even if you're in 2021, you perhaps would want to use that. I would avoid some of the pre-releases just in case. They can tend to be a little bit buggy. Once you've selected your version, you just need to click next and follow it all the way through and it will eventually install here. Once you have your version installed, you will be able to go to projects and you should be able to click on add or click on new. So add, if we go there, will actually bring up your first game. See where you can add a project if you already have one. If you don't, you would just click on new and you'll be able to add a brand new project. And realistically, all we need to do at this point is to select your project name. So you can name it there. Make sure we have 3D selected, and then you can select the location of where you want to save your project right there. Once you've done so, click on Create. Once you've clicked on Create, you'll be presented with this. This is the Unity Engine. So I'm going to briefly go through a couple of these windows that we can see in front of us. Don't worry if you find this too vague. We will go through them a little bit more as we use them in a real development environment. So let's start with this one over here. This one is the hierarchy. Now the hierarchy is basically just a way of showing what game objects you have in your current scene. What is a game object? Well, a game object is anything that you would see in this window here. This is the scene view. This is where we build everything within Unity visually. So if we have some models, some objects that we want to bring into Unity, you will be able to see them right here. Now, there are a couple of other windows also attached to this, depending on what your Unity looks like. You may have a couple more up here. I only have game at the moment. The game view is a way of actually playing the live game itself that you have built in the scene view. So, for example, if we have an area that we have a player wandering around on, we can actually play that game inside the engine rather than make a standalone build. And we can achieve that effect just by clicking this play button up here. It will go slightly darker and you will go into this right here and you'll be able to play whatever you have built. Obviously, we do need to build a couple of things before we can play it realistically. 
Over here we have the inspector panel and at the moment the inspector panel is completely blank. However, this is where interaction between these panels now starts to come into effect. We can click on main camera and we will see things appear here in the inspect panel. All of these represent something known as components within one single game object. So we have the main camera game object selected and we can see all the components attached to that game object. Because this is a camera, we would expect to see a camera component. And we always have this transform component on any game object. The transform component is basically just a way of the object knowing where it is, how it's rotated and how big or how small it is. All of this is determined by an X, Y and Z or Z coordinate right here. They can be changed if need be. And as I said earlier, this is a camera component. There are many hundreds of types of components within Unity. You probably won't use them all. You probably don't know them um, all, I would say, because most of the time, one single uh, project will not use every single possible component. The components serve different purposes for different game objects and for different project types. If we were to click on the directional light, for example, we can see that there is a light component attached to it. So everything that we would need to control a light source within the scene is right there for us. Down here, we have something known as the project window. The project window is where we store all of our assets. What is an asset? Well, an asset can be anything that we use to create a game with. It could be a texture. It could be a game object. It could be a script. It could be an audio file. So anything we would use to develop a game is classed as an asset. In fact, this here is a scene, and even a scene is classed as an asset. If we were to go into this scenes folder, we will see here this little icon, and this little icon is the scene we are in. So if you want to build different levels, different areas, different segments, you would use different scenes. So we would build something within a scene. Now, next to this, we have console. The console is where we're able to see basically a breakdown of what is happening or perhaps there could be an error in some code of ours. We would see it here in the console and it will give some indication of what the problem is, what uh, we can do to resolve it, all things like that. So the console will come in very useful. So those are the basic windows that we will be using within this series. We will probably add a couple more as time goes on, but I will explain those even more as we get further in. The next thing I want to explain is something known as the build settings. So if we go to file and go to build settings, we can see here that we get a little pop-up window. This little Unity icon determines what platform you are currently building for. And at the moment we are in PC, Mac and Linux standalone. We can also develop for Universal Windows platform, iOS, Android, PS4, Xbox One, and most likely, because I'm not quite at the point where the PS5 and Xbox series have come out yet, we will be able to put those there as well when support is released by Unity for those platforms. So whatever platform you want to build this game for, you would select here. You can change the target platform at any one point throughout the game. However, I do recommend the earlier you do it, the better. The reason being is because the shorter amount of time it will take to convert the platform. So for example, if we want to build for Android, we can select Android and then click on switch platform and it will switch the target platform to Android. This doesn't mean that you are permanently stuck developing an Android. You could make your game completely in Android platform and then switch back to PC, Mac and Linux, and then you could build it for PC, Mac and Linux as well. So build support for all of these devices, all of these platforms is entirely up to you. However, you do have to remember that sometimes you may need a license. This is the case with at least the PS4. So Unity is object oriented, but that doesn't mean there isn't just as much coding. You've got to always remember that. I'm just gonna close this window down now. So when we speak about objects, what do we mean exactly? Well, the most basic object within Unity is a cube. So let's bring a cube into our game. So let's click on game object at the top and we are presented with a menu of various different types. And the one we want to aim for is a 3D object cube. 
and this will be placed inside your scene. So what does this mean? Well, realistically, it means that if we go to the game view, we can now see an actual game object in our game. And I know for some people this may seem a little bit simplistic, a bit plain, nothing exciting about that. But for those of you who are brand new to game development, that is a revelation. You've managed to insert a game object into a game already. So let's actually reposition this cube. Remember earlier I spoke about the transform component up here? Well, at the moment it stuck it in a random position. The center of any scene is always going to be zero, zero, zero on the x, y and z coordinates. And that is the center of the scene. So let's take a look what we can do with this. Did you notice how I managed to quickly look down at that cube? What I did was I held down my right mouse button and I dragged the mouse so I could see and look around. You'll notice that we can change that to an eye icon and we can pivot around as such. The left mouse button will select things within the scene so we can physically click any objects within the scene itself like so. The mouse wheel allows you to zoom in and zoom out. And if you click the mouse wheel and hold it down, you can actually pan around like so. All of those options are relatively simple to use and they do have a couple of different ones up here. We have the hand tool right there. We have the move tool, which is what I do have selected to do everything with right now. We do have a rotate tool, which allows us to rotate game objects. And you can see if I hover my mouse over certain places of this rotate uh, sphere, we can see that's how we rotate it. And I've just held my left mouse button down and you can see the light source rotating and changing how it looks in the window. Let's hold control and press Z to undo that and reset it. Next, we have the scale tool and this allows us to scale the size. Now, things like a light source won't matter when scaling because they are singular. They exist just on one plane of existence. Something like a cube, however, is a little different. We can change how big it is by using the scale tool. So now let's undo that. We can also use the rec tool to do pretty much the same thing. However, the rec tool is designed for more of a 2D view. So when we come to designing some UI elements, some on-screen text or imagery, we would use the rec tool a little bit more. And we also have the, what I like to call all-in-one, which gives us a bit more convenience around changing objects. So it's worth playing around with some of these tools just to kind of get your feeling, your grips, your bearings with Unity and all of its tools. So remember I spoke about this cube earlier. Well, let's hold down that mouse wheel and get it into view. Let's select our move tool. And now let's play around with the rotation. So we could type a rotational number here. So let's say 45 degrees, or we could hover our mouse over either the X, Y or Z, and we can change it by holding down the left mouse button and moving like so. So we can do that on any axis, any at all. And we can also do that with the scale. So we can change the scale exact same way. So now we have the kind of unity imagery that it has there. That whole kind of shape, you know what I mean. So what I like most about how all of this works is the simplicity of unity in itself. And it is a fantastic application to use. So if you are a beginner to all of this, I would recommend playing around with some of these objects. This is just one simple object. And let's say, for example, if you have gone too far, you've modified it way too much, you can always click on the component up here, click the dots and click on reset. And it will place it back to its original form before you started making modifications. So now we have this back to normal. So let's save our scene as it is now. So let's hold control, press S and save that scene. We're still in that sample scene, so that's all good. So up until now, we have learned pretty much the basics of Unity. We've added a game object. There are other game objects that we can add in, whether it's a light source, audio, UI, more 3D objects, and we probably will 
delve into them a little more in the next tutorial. But for now, as long as you are happy with uh, how Unity is for you, how it's laid out, if you're comfortable, you can probably move on to that next tutorial. If not, play around a little bit more, explore different options of all we've seen here, because we've only explored the very basic options. Basic is all we need at the moment for this series, but we'll get into more as we go further along. So next tutorial, we are going to delve into some materials. Materials are absolutely essential in Unity development. So I hope to see you in that next tutorial. Thank you very much for watching.